The great gift and curse of Roblox developers. Roblox developer idealism. This is basically the natural tendency that Roblox devs have to idealize, to have this big fantasy of what game they wanna make, to have this big grand plan, this grand vision, and to really have a lot of passion for their work. This happens in pretty much every Roblox dev. I have not seen a dev in this community who is serious about this craft, who does not have this idealism. Now this can lead to a lot of good, right? Devs try to make very creative projects. They try to make games. They stick at it in this field for years. But there are a number of problems that come with the default Roblox developer idealism. If you wanna learn one highly lucrative skill that will earn you money fast in Roblox development, join Scripting Secrets below. This is my course on scripting. It is one of the fastest ways to learn it that exists. It has helped lots of members figure out the ropes. I will see you inside top link in the description. Go ahead and click that to join now. When devs are highly idealistic, when they start, it makes devs have very, very high standards for themselves. It makes them have perfectionism. They set the bar at front page dev level bar. They think they need to be as good as a Simo or Jandel or any other big dev mini tune when they get started. But this is simply impossible for a new dev who just started learning scripting or building one week ago. But yet devs try to do that. They try to be a front page dev on day one. And why is this? Well, the reason is, what is the only model that people have for a good Roblox developer? Exactly, front page devs. If I tell you to think of a Roblox developer, you're gonna think of one of the top devs. You're gonna think of one of these people behind these big games, especially complex games, especially if you're a dev, like you appreciate the artistic side of Roblox dev, you like Jailbreak and how they made this open world game with this massive map. You're gonna have a lot of appreciation for that. Now this sounds good on the surface, but what does it do? This makes new devs try to make their dream game on day one. Devs plan out this massive game, right? They wanna make the next Jailbreak, the next Brookhaven, the next Forsaken on day one. And 90% of the time, these devs burn out and quit because they aren't capable of that at their skill level, right? So we're talking a lot on this channel about passion and strategy. Now, the reason that I say passion is important, but it's not everything, you need strategy first, is not because I think passion is bad. Like some people will say that, oh, Smarty thinks passion is bad. That's a very dumb way to look at what I'm saying. What in reality I'm saying is that passion is so strong for new devs it's a very powerful force, right? But it's so strong that devs need to direct it towards somewhere. They need to control it and they need to tone it back even. Devs need to not make the most complex game in the world on day one. Instead, devs need to make simple games first. When you make simple games, what happens? You make something that you can finish in a week or a few weeks. You create something that matches your skill level and feels rewarding and not too overwhelming. You also make it so you can actually ship something to the market. And that way you get marketing knowledge and you can start to earn money if you monetize it properly and actually get players on it. That's why I say you can make an obby, a simulator, a tycoon, a steal a game, jump on a trend. This is the best approach for new devs. Now people will hear this and they're like, oh, Smarty's just saying to make cash grabs. Well, it turns out that the games that people call cash grabs are the best games for new developers to make. And these games, right, they aren't even cash grabs. When you're making a game that's simple and well monetized, whether you call that a cash grab or not, which is really a negative term, is a matter of personal opinion. I don't think it's a bad thing to make one of these games. So I'm not gonna use the word cash grab or slop to describe it. But the problem is when devs are constantly using this language, right, language affects how we think a lot. They think these games are bad, so they think, oh, I can't make a cash grab. The only thing I can make to be accepted by the developer community is a complex passion project. Otherwise, I'm just another one of those greedy devs, right? So you can see how this way of thinking makes it so that 
devs make complex games not just because of Roblox developer idealism, but also because they think it is the morally righteous thing to do to make the most complex game in the world on day one, to make the equivalent of the Mona Lisa as their first game. This leads devs down a dark rabbit hole that usually makes them quit or it makes them stumble around for years on nonsense before finding an approach that actually works. So idealism is powerful. Passion is helpful, but it's not everything. We need a plan. We need a strategy. We need an approach. We need a way to look at Roblox development that helps us to set goals, plan ahead for the future, and make moves that help us to achieve those goals in time. Now, when we have goals, it's a lot easier to figure out our Roblox development career strategy. And it's a lot easier to cut back the idealism, right? Because, okay, if you're a new dev, if you're a hobbyist dev who's just started, what is your number one goal, right? It's trying to make that dream game, right? And making that dream game is something you should not do as your first project, as we have already explained thoroughly. So if you instead focus more on the goal of making money, you will naturally focus more on simple games in order to achieve that end. Now, that makes it a much healthier approach for new devs to focus on gaining capital than trying to make passion projects first. It means they're focused on shipping MVPs to the market. When you focus on making money, it's not just about this greedy pursuit of acquiring as much currency from your players as possible. It's actually about learning the skill of marketing. See, devs don't learn marketing unless they put projects out there. You don't learn what players want until you put something out there. I learned some of my biggest lessons ever by both working on games that actually shipped and got players like in commissions and making games in Jimmy Games that got players. That taught me a lot about the strategy first mindset and it helped me to shift into that way of thinking. And it shattered my view of development, right? It shattered my hobbyist mentality that I had back then where I thought that passion was everything, where I thought you had to make the dream game that you wanted to make. I thought it was the right thing to do. In fact, I didn't just think that it was the right thing to do to make my dream game first. I thought that it was the only ticket to succeed on this platform. See, I had this vision in my mind that I would make the perfect role play game, make it better than Brookhaven, take over the front page, make millions of dollars, become accepted and famous in the Roblox community, and just achieve everything at once with this one game, this one project. Now you can see, looking back, how this was a foolish strategy because I'm betting everything on one game. I'm putting all my eggs in one basket. And what happens when you do that? You increase the amount of risk that you fail, right? That's what we don't talk about in this community when we talk about making passion projects. Like people will preach passion projects because it sounds altruistic. It sounds like, oh yeah, you're doing this good thing for the community. You're helping them. You're giving them better games. You're giving them high quality games instead of all this slop. But in reality, right, when devs are so focused on making passion projects like I was to serve the community, they end up ignoring and neglecting themselves, right? You have to focus on yourself first. Once you build yourself up into the position where you have funds, where you have a lot of skills, where you have a network, where you have a team you can rely on, then you can invest in passion projects. Then you can even invest in helping improve the platform and help the Roblox community. But until then, it is this pursuit that is impossible to contribute to. You gotta be focused on your own cause, right? And people will call this wrong all day because self-interest is the greatest sin in the Roblox religion, this ideology that people worship in this community. But you have to just ignore their opinions because you will see them all over the place. You'll see them in my comment section. They become very clear then. Like you can see how emotional hobbyists get. It is insane when you challenge their views. They will write literal essays and books in the comments to try to fight me on this. And they're just showing how their emotional, non-strategic way of thinking holds them back. The, like, it's a perfect example that they're giving us right there. They think they're fighting back against strategy first, but they're just proving more and more why the hobbyist mindset is so detrimental to devs because they're wasting all that time arguing in the comments. They're wasting all that time debating while strategy first devs, true strategy first devs are focused on building their careers. 
They're focused on moving forward. They're focused on making new games, not micromanaging the actions of other devs. Oh no, you can't make cash grabs. Stop, stop, stop. Dude, how about you calm down for a second, Mr. Hobbyist, and you make a game that you think you think will save Roblox. Instead of telling these devs to stop making cash grabs, right? Let them do whatever they want, okay? If you really want to help the hobbyist cause, instead, sit down, make the next jailbreak, be my guest, right? Go ahead and do that, see how it goes. And then strategy first devs can keep focusing on building their careers. And if you're right, you should beat them, right? If passion projects prevail, if that is the key to success on Roblox, if it's all about passion, oh yeah, strategy doesn't matter at all. If you shouldn't focus on money at all, go ahead, do that. Let us know how it goes, okay? And then come back and tell us, all right? Instead of writing these books and essays in my comments, come back and tell us. Let us know how it goes, Mr. Hobbyist. I'd love to see. But until then, right, they're just gonna keep arguing in the comment section and they're gonna keep on writing their books while strategy first devs, people who truly internalize the information I'm sharing, go and take action. And that's what matters most. So. Take that away from these videos. Ignore the comments, ignore their opinions, ignore the shaming for making games that work in the market, the cash grab labeling, ignore all this nonsense from the hobbyist hive mind. They're just trying to pull you back down. That's all it is. They're just commiserating and crying over the fact that old Roblox is gone and new Roblox is here. And that's how it is. And it seems like the only community that has truly accepted this are the strategy first devs who follow me on this channel. And of course the devs who are all over the front page succeeding with simple games, etc., and building careers and businesses on this platform. So subscribe now to Smarty RBX. And again, if you want access to lessons and direct help from me where you can ask me any question you want about development, join Scripting Secrets now. It has helped hundreds of devs to learn scripting faster than any other method. I will see you inside. Peace.